Thank you. I'm always glad to be a part of your day. What a blessing it is that you would share some time with us as we present today's program of Faith, Family, and Freedom. It always intrigues me. It's exciting just to say those words, faith, family, and freedom. I believe they're paramount in some of the top vocabulary words that we might find. Today, we have a variety for you. I mean, it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to introduce today the late Dr. R.G. Lee, who preached this classic message over a thousand times, over a thousand times, payday Sunday. Now, the film footage is vintage, but it's not of modern day quality, so you'll have to listen uh, pretty intently, and uh, we apologize for that, but he first preached this message, as I understand it, in 19 and 19. It became a classic. You know, a lot of preachers have gotten identified with certain messages, like J. Harold Smith's God's Three Deadlines and uh, different ones that we might mention. But R.G. Lee, who was pastor of the Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, in his uh, oratorical style, put the story of Ahab, Naboth, and Jezebel into almost like a drama, into four sections. And he was asked to preach this message, evidently, about everywhere. So I want you to join with me as we join the late Dr. R.G. Lee and Payday Someday. Naboth was a devout Jezreelite who lived in the foothill village of Jezreel. Naboth was a good man. He abhorred that which is evil. He claimed to that which is good. He would not dilute the stringency of his personal piety or any profit in money. He would not change his heavenly principles for loose expediences. And this good man who loved God, who loved his family, who loved his nation, had a little vineyard which was close by the summer palace of Ahab, the king of Israel. And this little vineyard had come to him as a cherished inheritance from his forefathers. And because of this, every square inch of the soil and every vine was very dear to his heart. I introduce to you Ahab, the vile human toad who squatted upon the throne of the nation. He had command of a nation's wealth and a nation's army but no command of his lusts and appetites. He wore the richest kind of clothes, but he had underneath these clothes a wicked heart. I introduce to you Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, the king of Tyre, and the wife of Ahab, the king of Israel. Infinitely more daring and reckless was she in her wickedness than was her wicked husband. She was a devout worshiper of Baal and hated anybody and everybody who did not worship her pagan god. I introduce to you the preacher, Elijah, the prophet of the living God, often alone, but never lonely, because he had communications with heaven. He wore the roughest kind of clothes, but he had underneath these clothes a righteous and courageous heart. He had eight birds, food, and widows fair, but was a great physical and spiritual athlete. He grieved only when God's cause seemed to be tottering. He was God's tall cedar that wrestled with the paganistic winds of his day without bending and without breaking. He was God's granite wall that stood up and out against the rising tides of the apostasy of his day. He was a seer who saw clearly, a great heart who felt deeply, a hero who dared valiantly, and God took him home to heaven without the touch of the death dew upon his brow. With the introduction of these four characters, Naboth the devout Jezreelite, Ahab the vile human toad squatted upon the throne of the nation, Jezebel the beautiful adder coiled beside the toad, and Elijah the prophet of the living God, I bring you as best I can the tragedy of payday someday. And the first scene in this tragedy of payday someday is a real estate request. And Ahab the king said unto Naboth the Jezreelite, Let me have thy vineyard for a garden of herbs, because it is close by my palace, and I will give thee its worth in money, or if it please thee, I will give thee a better vineyard for it. 
Thus far, Ahab is perfectly within his rights. He had no intention of cheating Naboth out of his vineyard or of killing him to get it. And under ordinary circumstances, we might expect Naboth to put away any sentimental attachment which he had for his vineyard that he might please the king of his nation. Because honestly did Ahab offer him its worth and money. Honestly did he offer him a better vineyard for it. But Ahab forgot if he had ever known the reluctance of every devout Jew to depart with an inheritance which had come by the commandments of God from their forefathers. And by peculiar tenure, every Jew looked upon God as the real owner of the soil, as well as the maker of the heavens and the earth. And every family received its lot, and every tribe its inheritance from Jehovah God, with this specific stipulation, the land shall not be sold forever. Ye strangers and sojourners with me, the land is mine. And so Naboth, standing upon the commandments of God, and with true-hearted loyalty to the covenant God of his fathers, and preferring the duty which he owed to God to any danger which might come from man, and with tones of terror in his words, and no doubt a frown of displeasure upon his face, he said unto the king, God forbid it me that I should let thee have my inheritance for money or for a better vineyard. Naboth believed that he held that land in fee simple from God. And besides this, all the tender memories of his childhood were tangled up in those vines. His father, sleeping now in some obscure grave, had worked in that vineyard, and it was dear to his heart. And his mother, sleeping now in some dust-stained shroud, had gathered the clusters of the ripened grapes in the days of the vintage. Naboth was bound up to his little vineyard by the triple tie of religion, of sentiment, and our family pride. And when he thought of his little vineyard so sanctified by sweet and holy memories, and so enriched by prayer, coming into the hands of Ahab and Jezebel, his soul rose in quick and righteous revulsion. And with the courage of a bird that dares a stormy sea, he said, God forbid it me that I should let thee have my inheritance. just moving right along in today's program. I heard this song several years ago. There's a little pine log cabin, and I have heard it maybe by Pine Ridge Boys and perhaps others, but the Blackwood Brothers also made their arrangement of it. And uh, of course, we didn't have the film footage for when that song was introduced, but it's not necessarily a strong Bible song, but it's a song of nostalgia. It's a song of remembrance, maybe more simple times when many of us can relate to perhaps more primitive conditions, whether it was in the family living or not having all the modern conveniences and uh, when we uh, didn't have air conditioning and. Uh, water was from the well or wherever. And, uh, but I think that we have included even some family pictures in this one today. I think that you will really enjoy There's a Little Pine Log Cabin. Just to be again returning To the little pine log cabin In the land of my dreams As the little lamp might 
shining There's a little trail all winding Down the little valley to the little cabin Peaceful, I'm still Honeysuckle vines are growing And I know I'll soon be going To the little pine log cabin at the foot of the January the 31st through February the 3rd of 2023. I believe there are, I think there are 25 singing groups. There are several preachers. And you're able to attend whatever the itinerary makes for that day. And there are so many choices. And of course, a lot of wonderful food. The camaraderie is great. They, they close all the bars, the casinos and things. And Shirley and I would be delighted to be your tour host. We've been privileged to go several times. We always enjoyed. I've spoken on the cruise ship a few times, and it's certainly been a, a, a memorable event. And friends, again, it's been an honor to be a guest with some regularity on Real America's Values. Thanks to Ed Henry and Karen Tuck. They have been very gracious. They've been very hospitable to me. And for that, indeed, I'm grateful. It gives us an opportunity to give a perspective, perhaps, that we don't see very often in the media. Although I think they have a proclivity to include Christian materials, perhaps more so than maybe some of the other conservative media. But anyway, it has been a very special delight, and it allows me to reach some people all across the country. And so for that, we indeed appreciate it. I think that we ought to use every means possible, whether it's television, radio, tracks, whatever we can do. We need to help each other. And this is what this program is all about. We want to help you. I want to help myself and try to be more knowledgeable so that we can be informed people. We need to be informed. We need to speak truth to error. We need to do our best to see what the biblical view is and hang to it. As the late Bob Jones Sr. once said, if the stars fall from heaven, do right. And I appreciate that. And we'll be back in just a little bit. Let's go now to the great state of Indiana where we see a great patriot named Andrew Phipps, friend of the show. You can find him at andrewphippsministries.com. Andrew, good morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Good morning. Good morning. I had a wonderful weekend. I hope that you and Karen did as well. It's been wonderful. All right. Well, that's good to hear. Summer's kicking off good for you and your family. Uh, our president was overseas uh, groveling with the Saudis, trying to get more oil. So far, they're saying they're not going to increase production. A lot of people are wondering why he didn't take Air Force One, I don't know, to maybe the great state of Texas instead of Saudi Arabia, uh, and just opened up the spigot and, and increased some production because uh, the left doesn't want to do that. But we've got a lot of energy right here at home, sir. Absolutely. Well, you know, it seems like that we have reached the height of incompetency uh, it has been said in the past that if you put the federal government in charge of the Sahara Desert, there would soon be a shortage of sand. Uh, inflation that is impacting each one of us, it means we pay more for goods and services. And uh, it's an unfortunate thing. Obviously, it must be uh, driven by the radical left that want to uh, emphasize alternative cars like uh, electric cars. And can you imagine having the, uh, the, the breakdown down on the grids 
when we can't even sustain it in certain places now when we have a lot of air conditioning, but uh, to try to have millions of cars that would yeah. be driven, it, it seems to be on my pay grade. And I think it's really an affront to the American people that we go and we almost beg to people that hate us, dislike us, when we have within our own natural resources, Texas and the Keystone Pipeline and others, we have an abundance of oil that uh, God has allowed this great country to have. I think it's just a nefarious a situation somebody uh, is going to have to answer to this, and I think it's coming pretty soon. Yeah, uh, you I think know, it's you mentioned coming pretty soon. I like that. I like how you ended that there. Nefarious is a great word, and then you said you think it's you, you actually think you're optimistic that there's going to be some change that God is going to win here and quickly. Is that what you're saying? I think that we're going to see a tsunami. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, "Give people the facts." and the republic will be saved. I still have enough confidence in just the ordinary people. I'm not talking about the elites in D.C. I'm talking about the people here in the heartland and people that make a living, go to work every day and do the jobs that have to be done. I think that they have had enough. We have lost it on the social, the economic, and the political. We've lost it in all of those areas. I mean, we are doing things that seem like insanity is being redefined, uh, as far as I can tell. You know, you mentioned electric vehicles. Karen, was it you or someone else who were in Vegas said they got an Uber that was an EV? I did, yes. And I got wasn't a, your problem with the air conditioning? I got a could, Tesla, yeah. What and happened? So I get in the car, and it's it's hot, Andrew. It's hot. It's like 110 oh. degrees. And I get in the car, and it's still hot in the car. And the driver says to me, yeah, because it's an electric vehicle, it's so hot outside that the air conditioning can't run enough power. Plus, he says, you see where it says my battery has an hour and 43 minutes or 140 43 miles or however it was calculated he goes I have probably 50 percent of that based on the energy that I'm consuming because of the heat and I have to go home and charge my car here soon I can only do three more rides so well, it's just well, absolutely you, crazy yeah, and, Andrew, and, the, the, and Buddha judge and the Biden people are saying go out and get these EVs Karen gets in one the air conditioning is not even working go ahead uh, oh mayor Pete had difficulty in trying to govern as mayor in Fort Wayne and to put him in a, as a head of the transportation. Wow. Uh, again, uh, we redefine idiocy. I, I think when you have weather hot enough where that birds have to use uh, potholders to pick up corn in the field and uh, then uh, <laughs> tell folks that, uh, that we're going to go to an electric thing and an alternative. You know, I, I, I think that there's no such thing as a free lunch. We learned that in economics uh, 101. And uh, yeah. there, there's always something that we have to give up. We give up time for money. and uh, But to say that you can have goods and services controlled by the government. We've already seen what happened there with the COVID mandates. We've already seen yeah. poor government. And that's the thing that the founding fathers dread, dreaded. Uh, Jefferson and all of them, they, they felt that the best government is the least government. And everywhere today that the government can intrude and take away our rights or try to make it more difficult, whether it's to uh, uh, worship or to w protect the sanctity of life or whether or not it's to keep our borders secure. I really believe that Karen and Ed, and I'm so grateful for the interview, that uh, we're going to see uh, uh, the, the people, we the people, those are the three words in our preamble, we the people. And I think that the people today are about ready to say, Let's change directions. This present administration is an embarrassment. You know, uh, if you might permit me, you know, we just had the funeral of Woody Williams, the last surviving hero the, yep. uh, from yep. Iwo Jima uh, of World War II. And uh, when you think about uh, those people that fought 
And all throughout our history, we've seen people that gave the ultimate to stand in harm's way for our country. And when you see the greatest country in the world that's literally going down the tubes and we're asking aid from people that would kill us in a heartbeat if they had the opportunity, I, I believe that each one of us needs to be seeking the face of God and asking for forgiveness and praying for a change in our leadership. Wise words, as always, from Andrew Phipps. We appreciate it. We the people. Easy way to yeah. sum it up. You're right, sir. We'll see you next week. Thank you, my friend. If you'd like to have any of our products, we do have a Faith, Family, and Freedom handbook. We have some DVDs. We did one with Pastor Jim Scudder in Washington, D.C. a little over a year ago. It's called, Can You Find God in D.C.? I think you will enjoy the beautiful programming that was done in the Jefferson and Lincoln Memorials and other places. If you want any of our products, just call us or get in touch with us as would be indicated there on the screen. It's time to plan for the 47th Annual Southern Gospel Singing at Sea Cruise. Join Andrew and Shirlene Phipps as you depart from Port Canaveral for the trip, January 30th through February 3rd, 2023, for warm sunshine and tropical breezes in the Caribbean. With 30 of the top Southern Gospel groups in the nation, you will be entertained and you'll be inspired by the best in Southern Gospel preaching. Dine on delicious food, see the sights, and bask in the warm glow of Christian fellowship on the world's largest all-Christian cruise to the Bahamas. Hurry, because this trip of a lifetime sells out fast. All that is needed now is a small deposit, and you can continue to pay over time. For more information, call Andrew Phipps at 765-744-4239. The weather is heating up, and so are the deals. It's time for spring specials at Sam Pierce Chevrolet in Daleville. Lease a new Chevy Equinox LS for only $159 a month, or lease a new Chevy Blazer for just $269 per month. Save thousands on nearly 200 pre-owned vehicles in stock, all with a warranty and complimentary maintenance. Hurry, once these vehicles are gone, so are the special prices. Don't miss out on the spring specials, only at Sam Pierce Chevrolet. The best Chevy deals are in the country. Well, you know, in the old Bible, it talks about iron sharpeneth iron, and that good news from a far country is like cold water to a thirsty traveler. Well, I think today that we can be helpful. I believe that we ought to enjoy fellowship one with another. Uh, I like to think that my job is to try to help encourage people. I'm not trying to discourage people. We do want to speak as truthfully as we can, and we realize that might antagonize some people and might surprise others. But anyway, we want to be something positive in a time when it seems like that when we think things have gotten just about as bad as they could get, then a new revelation comes along and it seems like it's even more depressing than what we just heard the other day. Crime and lawlessness and people being fierce people being angry, people being divided. It seems like those are the qualities that we might think are the epitome of what we see collectively across the country. And uh, I don't know what we can do necessarily. We can try, but uh, I'm all for remembrance, but just lighting a candle when there is a sad situation, I'm not sure that that's the answer, although I'm not opposed to that. But I would say this, we need to take preventive steps. We need to do what we know that we can do uh, to be informed citizens. And I'm glad that the court seems to be ruling more and more in what we would call in the favor of common sense, whether it's about abortion, whether about the right to carry, open carry, whether or not it's about defending ourselves in our homes, about the right of churches, the right of be, being able to pray in public, being able to pray on, on property, government property or whatever, and seem like we've had some good rulings, and I appreciate that. We've not 
gotten there yet, but it seems like we're making some steps in the right direction. And I applaud the members of the U.S. Supreme Court that try to uphold that tradition, and I pray for their safety. I hope that you have enjoyed the program today. I'll look forward to being with you again at the next opportunity. But until then, this is Andrew Phipps saying, have a great day. God bless. Phipps Faith, Family, and Freedom, presented by Clemens Home Solutions and Heritage Funeral Care.